I'm going to talk to you about German detective fiction tonight, particularly the ways in which it's affected by memory, the weight of the German past. You start with a crime. There's no detective fiction without a crime. And usually it's the biggest crime of all, murder. Now, a crime is not just a crime. It's the violation of a taboo. It's a major breach in the fabric of the world around us. It puts our whole world out of whack. So we've got a crime. Now we need somebody to figure out what happened, maybe even to put things right. So we need a detective. Watch this. See. Yeah. Ich. So he says, you. And he says, yeah, me. Now he's saying, shoot me, shoot me. Once again, everything turned out okay. This is probably the most violent clip in the entire series. But look what happened, or didn't happen. Derek looks like your grandfather. He looks older than my grandfather. He does have a gun, although how many of you actually saw it? It's only on screen for a little bit, and it's this little tiny gun. Nobody gets shot. There aren't even any snarky comments. Well, that went well again. Derek is not this. Derek is your grandfather. Derek is Derek because he's not this. You can't ask anyone in the German-speaking world to identify with a detective because of this memory. You would recognize German detective fiction if you met it on the street. We find the same thirst for justice, the same fear of crime, the same use of rational detection to find the truth that we find in all detective fictions. When we read detective fiction, we are all children of the Enlightenment. And yet, just as clearly, there are some specific differences in German detective fiction. There's the omnipresence of a terrible past filled with the worst injustices imaginable and a burning desire to make up for this past, a fierce determination that it should not be allowed to happen again.